Welcome, my name is Mr. Sunreen, and today we're going to be looking at what patterns do I notice when I multiply unit fractions by non-unit fractions. Before we get into today's lesson, we're going to go over what is a unit fraction and what is a non-unit fraction. A unit fraction is a proper fraction with a numerator of 1 and a whole number denominator. So in the example, one-fifth would be a unit fraction, and two-fifths, three-fifths, and 17-fifths would not be a unit fraction. Here are some additional examples of what a unit fraction are. Notice all, of the, all the numerators are one, while the denominators are different. One-half, one-fifth, and one-seventh. What is a non-unit fraction? A non-unit fraction is when the top number is more than 1. So in this case, we have 3 fourths. 2 fourths would also be fine as well. In this example, that means that we're talking about 3 equal parts of a whole. Additional examples of non-unit fractions would be 2 fourths, 2 thirds, and 3 fourths. And here are some other examples of what a non-unit fraction are. 3 sevenths, 5 fourths, and nine halves. Now we're going to get into today's lesson. Here, given the problem here, notice how it says one half times one third equals one six, or it could be written as one half of one third equals one six. In order to get one six, what do you do to the numerators? One and one. What do you do to the denominators, two and three? So pause the video, think about your responses. What do we get when we, how do we get one six when we look at our numerators and the denominators? So pause the video, write your responses, and I encourage you to write in complete sentences. And what we will do is we'll compare your answers with ones that I provided. Okay, we're going to move on. So some sample responses could be numerator. In order to get 1, I multiply 1 and 1 to get 1. For the denominator, in order to get 6, I multiply 2 and 3 to get 6. So if we look at this, we multiply the numerators on the top, and then we multiply the denominators on the bottom to get our answer. 1 times 1 equals 1. 2 times 3 equals and notice how even though it says times and of, they both mean the same thing. And that's going to be important. So anytime you see the word of, you can replace it with a multiplication symbol. Now we're going to get into some examples. Here are two examples. Answer the following questions. What is one-third of three-fourths? what is two-thirds of three-fourths. I've provided some steps here to help guide you with working through the problem. The first step is to change of to multiplication. The next step is multiply numerators across, then multiply denominators across, and lastly reduce your answer if possible. What is the largest number that can be divided by numerator and denominator. So I encourage you to pause the video, work through these two problems, and see what you come up with. I'm going to provide the answers on the next page with step-by-step -step guidance on how to work through it. Here we have some the problems worked through, and here we can check our answers. In order, the first step, what we want to do is what is one third of three fourths? Remember, the first step is to change of to multiplication. Here we have one third. Instead of of, we have multiplication, three fourths. And, and then we write our problem. Here we multiply the numerators across, one times three, three. And then we multiply the denominators across, three times four equals 12. 
The last step is reduce your answer if possible. What is the largest number that can be divided by the numerator and denominator? Here we see from three twelves, we want to find the GCF. So the GCF is the greatest common factor, and with three, we notice that what times what gives us three. So here we see one times three gives us three. In order to get 12, we do one times 12, two times six, three times four. And based on the two columns, the largest number that is shared is three. Therefore, we're gonna divide the top and the bottom number by three. Here we have three divided by three is one, and 12 divided by three is four. Therefore, our final answer is one four. We do the same thing with the second example, two fourths of three fourths. So here we change of to multiplication, and then we do two times three equals six, four times five equals 20, and then here we just multiply it across the numerators, we multiply it across the denominators, and we wanna think about if there's a GCF. Here we find the factors of six, one times six equals six, two times three equals six. We also do the same thing with 20. One times 20 is 20, two times 10 equals 20, and four times five equals 20. The largest number that these two numbers share is two. Therefore, we can divide two on the top and two on the bottom. Six divided by two is three, 20 divided by two is 10. Therefore, our final reduced answer is 3 tenths. Lastly, we're going to go over the summarize page. What steps do I notice when I multiply unit fractions by non-unit fractions? If the question has of it, it means multiply. So that's a key word. Of means multiply. And in future units, we will see the word of. This is going to be important that of means multiply. Here are some steps for you to work through in order to multiply non unit fractions by unit fractions. Multiply numerators across, multiply denominators across. Lastly, reduce your answer if possible. What is the largest number that can be divided by the numerator and denominator? Here are the notes for you. Here are the examples. And hopefully this was helpful for you in your lessons and math tasks. Have a great day.